Uh, yeah, a big thank you for tuning in. Uh, the latest in what's become a bit of a series, really, of catch-ups with uh, players past and present. And I'm delighted to say this afternoon we're joined, I think, by our first Premier League winner, uh, proud uh, Republic of Ireland international as well, in the former Jeff Kenner. Jeff, thanks for joining us. How are you doing, first of all? I'm doing very well. Uh, I am getting a little bit bored now of lockdown, <laughs> uh, but I'm sure that puts me in with the, the rest of the population. So uh, just looking forward to hopefully the end of it coming sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Colin Tatum, Head of Communications with us as well. And that's to echo Jeff's sentiments, I think we all can't wait uh, for football to return whenever that is safe and, and safe and sound to do so. Yeah, I think we're all getting to that stage now that, that it, the novelty factor, if there was any novelty about it, has certainly worn off and everybody wants to sort of try to get back to some sort of normality when it is safer I suppose that's that's the caveat isn't it yeah absolutely yeah uh, Jeff we usually kick straight into the players time at the club but because it is such a momentous weekend we've just touched upon it 25 years ago this weekend uh, you were part of the Blackburn Rovers side who clinched the Premier League title just relive that final day for us and the part that you played towards the end of the season uh, well I signed for Blackburn in uh, the middle of March uh, there was nine games left to play. I played in all of them. Scored a goal against Crystal Palace in a game we won 2-1. Uh, and obviously got to the, the final day of the season. And we, we uh, Man United had to win at West Ham. Thankfully, they didn't. Um, but I, I, it was 25 years ago to the day yesterday. So I was sat uh, with my family on the couch. and We, uh, we actually watched the Liverpool game, um, which was quite surreal really I didn't I didn't I hadn't met my wife at that time obviously I didn't have any children so uh, they were it, it was just it was a really nice moment actually to be to be sat there with my family and reminiscing about something that was uh, I'm, I'm very proud to have been a part of. It was uh, quite a dramatic last day wasn't it Jeff because I remember Sky was switching between Liverpool, Blackburn and West Ham, Man United and every time you saw the from Upton Park as it was then it was just wave after wave of attack, but Man U just could not score or, or get, get the uh, result they needed. Yeah, um, it, it was a crazy day. I mean, we, we probably put in our worst performance of uh, the season at Liverpool. And even in saying that, Chris Sutton had one cleared off the line. Shearer put one over the bar from six yards out. Uh, it, it, them scoring the free kick right in the last minute, it, it just... It's almost like it was just it was destiny to happen, you know. Uh, Ludo McCloskey, I believe, was the West Ham goalkeeper on the day. He was pulling saves out of left, right, and centre. Uh, so it was just, I think, over the, it's, it, I think everybody says that over the course of a season, it's never just on the one game. Over the course of a season, you either deserve to be champions or you're not. Yeah, how, how good was that team? It was it had some cracking players, real good balance to it. And and was it difficult for you to slot in, as it were, you know? on the back end of, of what was already an established side? Um, it, it, I didn't find it difficult, no. I was fortunate in the fact that I knew, uh, obviously, Alan Shearer and Tim Flowers from being at Southampton together. Um, so that made the sort of the stepping into the dressing room a lot easier because I, I knew them, so it was friendly faces to, to connect with straight away. Um, Jason Wilcox had, had done his cruciate, so that was the, the reason I'd been brought in. Um, they moved Graham Lasseau, to left side of midfield and I went in at left back and it was only funnily enough the, the last game at Anfield where we switched back around and I went to left side of midfield but uh, the, the team that time you know you'd gosh you'd four or five of the squad were England regulars you know um, and I don't think that would be ever happen again at, at Blackburn or certainly not for a long long time so the, the squad I mean Kenny Ray Harford Tony Parks they have to take great credit in the fact that they could attract that calibre of player uh, to what is essentially a, a small Lancashire town. Um, and it, it was just the stars aligned and everything was, was right for that season. Uh, and, the, you know, the, the, balance, the balance was great. We had quality in all every position. I'd say it was probably an international in every position. And, again, that's... That sort of goes back to the, the Liverpool time of old, you know, where Kenny, that was, that seemed to be what, what Liverpool had. They had, well, two internationals for every position, you know, and I think the quality that was in the squad was phenomenal. 
Yeah, I, I always look at it and you, you see a great balance and a great spine to that team and you had real genuine width, Ripley and Wilcox and then the front two, Shearer and Sutton, were, were pretty phenomenal at that, that period, weren't they? Absolutely, yeah. And then you go into midfield, you uh, Sherwood, Batty at the back, Colin Hendry, Ian Pearce, Tim Flowers and goal. You know, you, you talk about the spine of a team and that's usually where um, top teams people recognise that, that that strength through the middle of the pit, all the way through the middle of the pitch is uh, is very important. And uh, we certainly had that, yeah. Talk about Alan Shearer a little bit, both of your time at Southampton and Blackburn. We've all seen the clips of him, one of the all-time great goal scorers. Up close and personal, though, what made him special, Jeff? Uh, I think just his, his desire. He, he wanted to be the best. Um, I mean, I was a schoolboy with him at Southampton. We came through the ranks together, and from I remember being in the youth team. He scored something like I don't know fifty odd goals in in his first season. You know, as a, a sixteen year old, which was just phenomenal. And then he went into the first team more or less straight on the back of that season. Um, and from then, he, he's just proved to be a goal machine. Uh, he's he, he had strength. Uh, he had a little bit. He was I think he was quicker than people give him credit for. But what he what he had when the ball came in the box, he had that desire to get there first and be on the end of things. And and uh, I, I can always remember from gosh, going back to Southampton days, he was always on to the wide men just to get it in the box. He'll do the rest as long as you get it in the box. So that was a, a big thing. And at Blackburn, he used to give uh, Jason Wilcox and Stuart Ripley a little bit of stick because they like to take on the fullbacks before crossing. And he was always forever at them saying, you don't have to beat them, just put them in a box and I'll do the rest. And nine times out of ten, he did. So, he knew what he was talking about. Absolutely. Phenomenal player. Um, well, we've touched upon the low points in your career of winning the Premier League and playing with <laughs> Alan Shearer. But <laughs> onto, the, onto the highlights of, of joining Birmingham City. Just first of all, if you can remember how the move came about initially on loan, um, but December of 2001, where did you first hear about Blues' interest? Uh, at, um, let me see, it, it was actually sort of probably the, the first week in December. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was actually planning to go away. I was completely out of favour at Blackburn at the time under Graham Soonis. So um, well, we were actually getting the, the Christmas off. So my wife and I were planning on having a, a Christmas break. Um, and then I got the, the phone call saying, would I be interested in going alone to Birmingham? Um, I didn't have to think twice about it at all. I hadn't played for a competitive, competitively for a long, a long time. So I was more than happy to to jump at the chance to to come down over the Christmas and and certainly have a month. And it was with a view to a permanent deal. And obviously, I, I did well enough in in that initial month uh, for Steve Brucey to to sign me on. And I had two great years there. So that's when you think of that assembling that squad. We, we spoke to a few players who were part of that team. Was Brucey just putting the, the missing pieces of the jigsaw together to really mount that promotion push? Yeah, I think he was definitely looking for experienced campaigners as well, with strong mentalities like Jeff Steve Vickers came in as well. And then obviously added the, the sort of goals that he felt were needed with Stern John. Um, it, it, it was, did you get a feel for, feel for it straight away, Jeff, that, Bruce, he was sort of, you could see what he was trying to do. He wasn't dismantling the squad as such, but you could see he was certainly trying to change it around. And I think you made your debut, I think it was only his his third game in charge. In fact, so he, he was moving yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, gosh, the squad, I mean, we had the nucleus of a, a good squad, as you've, as you've just talked about there, you know. So, I don't, I don't think a, a major overhaul was needed. You know, a lot, a lot of managers, new managers come into a club and they want to change eight or ten players, you know, straight away. And it's, it, it, it can be more disruptive than anything. And then people talk about, well, well you need time to gel and, and this and that and so forth. But I think Steve, I remember there was myself, Steve Vickers, like you said, Stan John. Um, he, he sort of did it over time, really. Um, mm. And I, I remember, that, I mean, the, the big difference for me was I'd come, obviously, from Blackburn down to Birmingham. And the, the training facilities and so on were just, I'd gotten used to being spoiled up at Blackburn, you know, and went up to Wast. I mean, Wast Hills is a total, totally different beast now. But I'm sure if you talk to the lads from my era 
or even be, just before my year, Wast Hills was nowhere near the sort of the lovely training ground it is now. So that was a bit of an eye opener to start with. Um, but yeah, it was it was for me it was first and foremost about playing because I hadn't been playing, uh, and then ultimately I knew my time at Blackburn was coming to an end. So it was trying to impress enough to get a permanent contract. So from my perspective, I, I was a little bit more selfish from that front because I had a, I had my own little agenda going on, if you like, in the first month. Mm-hmm. Did you feel like that was your role, Jeff, when you stepped into the squad? You'd obviously experienced Premier League football for your career and some of these players in the squad hadn't ever reached that stage. So were you almost one of the senior boys when you stepped through the door? Uh, well, I was. I think purely because of my age as well. I was uh, <laughs> just coming up to 32. So um, it was... Uh, I was senior in more ways than one. Um, but, you know, the, the lads that were there already were a great bunch of lads, you know, and I think it's, a, as you both just mentioned, they just needed, Steve obviously had the, the insight to realise that three or four signings could hopefully get us where we wanted to be sooner rather than having to wait for the following season to come along and, and go from there. And uh, thanks, thankfully it did, you know, it was a, a phenomenal run in. Mm. Uh, obviously culminating with being promoted so fantastic yeah, you mentioned that that run there what 13 games all the way to Cardiff unbeaten I think and um, there's always that stat that uh, Olivia Tebbley was never on the losing side as soon as he came in what what was he yeah. like as a, as, a, as a character and, and a player because he, he was a bit he's a bit different wasn't he to say the least yes very very serious um, I mean I mean he liked he did, he did like a joke, but it was sort of on his terms. He he, he certainly didn't like to be the butt of the joke. Um, <laughs> he he was he was a, he was a little bit of a loner, if I'm honest. Mm. Uh, I got on very well with him. Um, you know, he he would never shy away from a conversation. He was, uh, but he he was he was a phenomenally strong player. You know, and did a, a magnificent job for us in whatever position Steve asked him to play in. Everybody thinks back to that. Fantastic run, the momentum that was built up towards the end of the season. And as you say, it's Millwall in the, the semi-finals. We've heard from, from Darren Carter. We spoke to Grange as well. And a number of players are involved in that campaign. What are your memories of, of those two games? I mean, most of them tend to lean towards the den because of what happened both on and off the pitch. But what was, uh, what was that like as, a, as a, an intense playoff semi-final? Uh, I mean, it, for us, it, it was great, you know, because as you said, we... Uh, if I remember correctly, we were sort of mid-table, 10th or 12th uh, in the league, uh, sort of in the middle of January. So to go on such a great run, to take us to the, the semi-finals, it, it, for me, it was, it was just a, a big confidence thing. You know, the, the lads were buzzing. Everything was as good as it could be. You know, we, we were winning games. So I, I, I think I'm in the same boat as everybody else. You know, I don't really remember much about the game at St. Andrews. Um, and obviously it was the the game at Millwall, uh, staring scoring so late on, and and then the obviously the the trouble that happened afterwards. You know, it's I played at the old then, uh, and I've never seen trouble like that. You know, it was it was very intimidating. You know, you walk through that sort of caged off bit at the the start of the game, and people are spitting at you and things like that. But I've never I've never been at a a game. Where that sort of happened, you know, it was, uh, God, it was just crazy. Yeah, Tachi was saying after the game, players hanging around on the pitch, everyone was a little bit lost. No one was allowed to leave. Fans were locked in. It was all a bit of carnage, was it? Yeah, the police basically said the safest place for you is is on the middle of the pitch. I just remember everyone was like drinking and celebrating, and it'd be past midnight, and you'd hear the police helicopter whirring around overhead. And I don't think any of us left the ground till you know well gone midnight. As I said, it was. It was yeah. crazy. It was, just, it was just like civil disorder, though, because a lot of the Blues fans had, had, had been shepherded out and gone quite quickly. The police had done a good job there. Um, but, it, but it was, again, it's that, that whole emotion of what those games mean. And obviously to, to us, although Jeff obviously wasn't at the club, you know, knocking on the door three years in a row and then finally getting to, you know, for the chance, you know, to, to get to the Premier League, it, it was just huge. It was just huge. Yeah, do you think it helped, Jeff, the fact that you know you look at that campaign, the four clubs that ended up in the playoffs, Wolves, Norwich, Millwall and ourselves, 
Wolves had been up there for the majority of the time and, and faded away. West Bromwich Albion got that second place. Do you think it helped the fact that, as you mentioned, January time, we weren't really in and around the picture anyway. So we've almost come up on the outside rail and all the momentum is with ourselves. And it, there's almost not, not, not nothing to lose, but you're, you're the sort yeah. of guys that can have a free hit. I, absolutely. I, I think you've, you've covered it very well there. Yeah. Um, nobody expected it. So the pressure wasn't there. The pressure sort of didn't arrive until maybe the last couple of games where everybody was saying, you know what, we could do it now. We can make the playoffs. Uh, and then obviously when you're there, the fact that we've had such a, a good run and the confidence is high going into that, you, you've, you've no reason to think anything other than, you know what, we can do this. Mm. Um, and I think that was the mentality going into the Millwall game. Yeah, we replayed the famous day at the Millennium against Norwich City a couple of weeks ago. And when you look back at it, Norwich were a team on the up, lots of young players as well. They went on to get promoted two seasons later. It just felt like... Um, that it was going to be bluesy season. There was a lot of senior players there. They all been around the block. They knew how to win a football game, no matter how scrappy it might have been. Were you confident going into that one, or take us back to the day itself, the, the playoff final? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, I'll, I'll say you know we were having had got the result at Millwall. Uh, it was another victory under our belt, albeit over two legs. And you know that the confidence was there going into the game. Obviously, there was more pressure shall we say because the the goal at the end was obviously the Premier League you know and, and for both clubs that's just huge you know they keep talking about being the most expensive game in football you know to win so it, it there was that added little bit of pressure to it but other than that you know it was um it was it was where we wanted to be and as you say there was a, a lot of the lads hadn't played in the Premier League before so that the carrot was there for them to to put that on their CV and you know I certainly as a, a player who just come down from the Premier League certainly wants to be back there because that's that is the league that everybody wants to play in so you don't need any more incentive the, the pressure was a little bit greater on that game but the confidence was good and you know we uh, we were all looking forward to the game. How was your penalty taking Jeff? Do you not fancy one on the day? <laughs> I, I was up number six. <laughs> but thankfully, it didn't get to that. That's all I'm saying on that. <laughs> I, I, my legs were led at that stage. So a penalty might have just seen me fall over. <laughs> we all say, Jeff, that obviously the glory goes to the goal scorers and so on. But that moment, take us back to it. The, the, the right wing, the, the, um, the cross from the right wing, I think it was. And uh, you and Roberts appearing on the back post and you getting that header away. Uh, it, probably a, a game-saving moment, really, right at the death. Yeah, a lot of people remember that. Yeah, it's, um, it's, I, I don't really remember too much about it other than stooping down to head it past yeah. the post. Um, but, yeah, a lot, a lot of people... I mean, I haven't watched the game, so... But a lot of people, when this sort of conversation comes up about being promoted, that's one of the things that they mention. So uh, it's it's obviously something that's stuck in people's minds. Um, but I mean, ultimately, you know, I'm, I'm doing my job. Goal scorers are there to, to score goals and I'm there to stop goals going in. So it's, it's collectively all part of the, the make of the team. Um, but it's, it, is, it is nice to, to sort of be remembered other than the penalties. Yeah, you and Roberts actually has cited it a few times in a few podcasts that he's talked about. Felt that his eyes were lit up at that back post and all of a sudden you came flying out of nowhere and took the ball right off his toes. So he certainly remembers it particularly well. Right. Um, it's, it's only now when you sort of look back as a, as a Blues fan and, and ourselves as we work at the club, that this was sort of a, a golden era for the club. St Andrews was packed each and every single week. You're just going into the first yeah. season now back in the Premier League. Uh, the atmosphere was just ferocious. I mean, when you look back at it now, how much did you enjoy that season back in the Premier League? You'd got back at the first sort of chance of, of getting back to where you just came from. Yeah. Well, for me, it was great. You know, um, I was the captain, so I got to lead the team out. It was a, a fantastic honour. Uh, and obviously, you know, straight away, right from pre-season, the bookies were saying we were going to be one of the, the teams to be relegated. Um, so we had that little bit of a, you know, a, I don't know if carrot is the right word to use, but certainly that was something that we were all aware of, you know, that a lot of teams that get promoted through the playoffs, 
can be relegated that next season. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we had a, a great squad. We had a, a real commitment to each other. You know, the, the, uh, the lads worked hard for each other. You would argue we weren't the, the most attractive team to watch, but we were very well organised. Everybody knew their jobs. Uh, and a little bit similar to, to Blackburn, you know, we would get the ball forward and we'd get the ball in the box and uh, Horse and Stern or Tommy Mooney or whoever was playing on the, on the day, we, we, could, we could grind out results. Uh, and ultimately, you know, gosh, we, we stayed up comfortably that year. Mm -hmm. Tats, when you look at the makeup of that squad, the players that were brought in, I mean, Kenny Cunningham comes in, Alou Cisse, Robbie Savage, Clinton Morrison. Will that squad sort of be remembered for the unity, the, the passion, that camaraderie that they seem to, to forge pretty quickly in that season in the Premier League? Yeah, for me, it, 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 the team had a real drive about them, a real sense of purpose. And like Jeff said, yeah, OK, there might not have been the, you know, the, the footballing sort of carousel quality, but... It had something about it, that team. Um, and the, the boys could play as well. And I think that window in that um, that, that first season up in, in 2002-03, that was a key one as well because the, the players that Steve Bruce brought in helped just get us over the line and I think sort of set a bit of a platform for the seasons after. And I think it was interesting as well, Jeff, that Jamie Clapham came in that uh, January. And I think you were having another spell at left-back, weren't you, until until Claps uh, joined the club? Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. Um, well, that's, again, you know, you're just, you're playing your part. Uh, I was comfortable enough to play on the left side, so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a problem. Um, so, yeah, again, you go back to that team spirit and everybody wanted to play and it, it, it was a case of just being in the team rather than, oh, well, I don't want to play if I'm not going to play in that position. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was just a, I think it was a, a great two. Well, I was there for two years, so for me, that those two years were were great. Yeah, when you think about back to the initial reasons for joining the club, Jeff. Now you look at the stats. I mean, that first season back in the in the Premier League, you played thirty nine games back in the top tier. So for you, it must have been from a personal perspective exactly what you were looking for from the move. Absolutely. Um, I, I had I'd had two. Uh, partial tears on my left Achilles when I was at Blackburn so I hadn't played um, consistently for probably the best part of three seasons so um, for me it was great to obviously get the initially the loan move to Birmingham for them to become permanent and then to go up within five months of signing for the club and then play practically every game next season I was absolutely thrilled with that yeah really really thrilled Got yourself the one goal as well in a one-all draw against Spurs. Do you remember that one? I do remember that one. Yeah, uh, I was playing. At, I was playing left back. I came inside. I, don't, I want to say it was Darren Anderson, uh, and it it went in at the, the far post. And if I remember correctly, that had something to do with us. Then whatever position we finished in after all the games that weekend was something to do with us ending up going out to Asia in pre-season. Uh, Tats might remember that better than I do, but I'm sure yeah, that had for, something to do with that. Yeah, for the Asia Trophy, yeah. I think it was a significant yeah. goal, wasn't it? Um, yeah. yeah but you, you didn't get many, but it was not a bad one. <laughs> I, no, I didn't, I didn't get many. Um, well, gosh, I think I only scored two at Birmingham. I only scored one at Blackburn and I think three <laughs> or four at Southampton. So, no, I, I wouldn't be uh, the most prodigious goal scorer as a defender. Yeah. When... Um, when Steve Steve Bruce brought Christoph in, Christoph to Gary, what 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 was that like, and what sort of presence was he on the training field and in the dressing room? Well, he was phenomenal. You know, um, obviously you, you just look at his CV and the clubs that he played for, and obviously winning European Championships and World Cups with France. You know, the, his pedigree was just second to none. Um, talent wise, he was off the scale. You know, the things he could do with a football and training were were scary. Um, he did have a little bit of that moody French sort of, if the ball wasn't exactly where he wanted it, he'd, he'd have a little moan up and he didn't want to run after it. Uh, but, you know, the, some of the goals he scored towards the end of that season um, really made a difference to, to us staying in the league, you know. So, again, it, it, you, you've got to think Bruce, he's done a, a good job there. He realised at the time what was needed, went out got what he felt would do the job and ultimately it did and 
we ended up, as we said before, staying up comfortably. But, you know, there was a, a little period, probably January, February, where we, we sort of, we were, we were dicing with death a bit. And I think just that little bit of injection of quality, just, uh, I think it, it probably settled everybody down a bit, you know. Yeah, you went back to the, the squad that were assembled there and everyone talks about the, the nonchalant sort of characteristics that Christoph Dugary brought, the oozing class. And Mikael Forsell is another player that supporters still look back on and his just electric feet in the 18-yard box. I mean, how good was he when you compare him to the sort of strikers that you played with before? Uh, again, you know, strikers come alive in the box and he had, yeah, like you say, electric feet. Um, it's it's such a pity he he suffered with his his knees, because uh, I'm sure he he would have gone on and had a a, a really really tremendous career, uh, scoring a lot a lot of goals. Um, but for us again, you know, it, it's something somebody to come in when you need it to give the the players that are already there a little bit of a lift. Uh, you knew he had that ability to to turn a half chance into a goal, and you know that's. Ultimately, in the Premier League, you know, when, where defences can be extremely tight and a, a goal can win or, or lose you a game. So, to have the ability, or a couple of players who have the ability to be able to, to produce something out of nothing, you, it always instills you with hope that, you know, if we keep it tight at the back, we only need the one chance or possibly two chances and we can get a, 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 either a win or a draw. And, uh, you know, that's, that, to me, that's how it proved to be over the the course of the season, you know, we uh, maybe I shouldn't say this, other than beating Villa 3-0, we didn't really route anybody, you know, it was a 1-0 or a 2-1, or so um, they were close games. So, But to have that ability of a couple of players in the team that can just produce a bit of magic out of nowhere to get you a goal, to get you the result, that's, uh, that's what you need to, to stay in the, the top division. Yeah, absolutely. We've um, we spoke to a number of players about the the derby games. I mean, you were part of a team who done particularly well against our neighbours in the second city, particularly that first one at St Andrews, the the three nil victory. I mean, have you been involved in an atmosphere quite like that before? Uh, if I'm being honest, I have. But what I will say is the importance of that game to the Birmingham City fans was just. It was all that people were talking about. From the minute we got promoted, that's all everybody was talking about. Nobody, not, certainly nobody I talked to, cared whether we stayed up as long as we beat the Villa. That was all that was important. If we had lost every game but beat the Villa twice, <laughs> Blues fans would have been happy with that. Um, or certainly that's what I was getting anyway from people I was speaking to. But um, yeah, it was just the whole build-up to the game was... Phenomenal. Um, the city was electric. You could feel it everywhere, anytime you were out. You know, people, whether they were Blues fans or Villa fans, everybody was talking about the game. Um, and God, Villa ultimately, I, in my opinion, uh, totally underestimated us. You know, I think they had a, a seasoned team of uh, internationals and probably really just didn't think we were going to be anywhere near or play anywhere near as well as we did. Yeah. Tats, we spoke about this, the squad and the teams that Brucey assembled. When you look at that 3 4 season, it then starts to turn a little bit and Brucey tries to bring in some, some players with a bit more flair and that bit more finesse. Is it one or two players just feeling that it might have been a bit too soon for that group? Yeah, I think... I think... Steve Bruce has said that himself. In hindsight, he wished he'd got a little bit slower. I mean, I mean, Jeff, I think you you went in the March two thousand four. That's I right. Yeah, I went to Derby then. Yeah. Yeah. And then that summer, um, you probably you tell us whether you, you saw the writing on the wall. I mean, Mario Melchior came in, and, and Emil Heskey, as he is it, Jesper Gronka. I mean, Bruce he decided to suddenly, you know, people always say to go to the next level, whatever that is, but. It didn't quite work out according to plan. I mean, did, do you think maybe that the, the team that he was assembling split up a little bit too quickly? Yeah, I, I mean, the fact that he said it himself, I would say yes. Um, I, I was disappointed that I, I left that year. You know, I, I was really enjoying my time at the club. I certainly felt I had another couple of years to play, no problem. Um, but it, it wasn't to be. Uh, and, you know, 
if, if you give credit to Steve, he did a, a phenomenal job in the first two years that he was there, you know, to, to be promoted within five months of taking over, then keeping the team in the division two years running. It's, I mean, the fans couldn't have asked for anything more. It, it's then, <clears throat> I think what happens is the fans then want to go to that next level. The fans then go, well, we're not really playing great football. So the, the expectation level, I think, from certainly the fans and possibly the, the club as a, a business, if you like, um, it, it is about going then to, as people say, the next level. So you, you talk about then bringing in more players. And to do that, to bring in arguably better players, you have to pay more wages. Mm. So it becomes then a, a bit of a, a vicious circle. You know, if you get half a dozen players in on 40 grand a week, but you get relegated, but they've got three or five year contracts, then it can unravel very, very quickly. So, I mean, hindsight is a, a great thing. You know, nobody makes a bad decision in hindsight. Um, but perhaps, yeah, he, he, he possibly could have done it a little bit slower. But, you know, it's, it's, it's very easy to talk about it in the aftermath. You know, if it had went well, people would have been saying, well, you should have done it sooner. So it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. But uh, I was disappointed to leave, I have to say. I, I really enjoyed my time at the club and we had a great, uh, great squad. So, but, but that's the business, you know, that's football and you move on and uh, football just keeps going, although not at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you move to, to, to Derby, Jeff, and then the following season again, play a whole host of, of, make a whole host of appearances in the Championship, reach the playoffs, unfortunately. Uh, you end up losing out to, to Preston, but... When you reflect yeah. on your career as a whole and, and your time at, at Blues, you must be absolutely thrilled with what you achieved in the game. Yeah. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm very proud. Uh, I started at Southampton. Um, I was lucky enough to play at Wembley, albeit in the Zenit Data Systems Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, Forrest beat us, uh, I think it was 3-2 it was or 2-1, can't remember. We lost anyway, I remember that. <laughs> um, and then to, to move, I had eight years at Southampton. I went to Blackburn got a Premier League medal, was there for seven years, had two years at Birmingham, got promoted back to the Premier League. Fantastic. Went to, uh, to Derby, got to the playoffs, wasn't to be. Uh, went to Kidderminster, finished. I had two years at Kidderminster, went back to Wembley in the uh, FA Vaz. Uh, unfortunately, lost to Steven. I think that was 3-2. Um, so, I mean, gosh, I, I got international caps, so I, I can't... I can't, I can't really complain. The, the only sort of icing on the cake, if you like, for me would be if I had been involved with the Republic when they played in the, the European Championships or the World Cup. But, you know, that wasn't meant to be. So I, I, I'm, I'm delighted. I played over 500 career games, scored a handful of goals. So uh, I've, I've plenty to be thankful for. Yeah. Still closely associated with the club. We saw you doing some running as well, videoing yourself after you'd... Uh... After you'd finished, oh my god, yeah, how was that? <laughs> that that was one of those where you go, Oh, yeah, I'm up for that, that's great, yeah, no problem, absolutely, I'll kill that. <laughs> and then you do your first run and you go, Oh my god, I gotta do this again tomorrow, and I've got to do it again the day after. I, I hadn't ran that sort of distance in you know, years, I don't know how long. So to do it three days on the trot, I, I can tell you, I had a, a couple of sore hips and a couple of sore calves at the end of Sunday evening. But uh, it, obviously, it was phenomenal from the club to put that together so quickly for so many people to take part in it. I was absolutely thrilled to be asked. Uh, I'm glad it's done. Um, <laughs> if, they come up with, if they come up with another challenge, I hope it's eating and drinking rather than running. Um, but no, on, on a serious note, it was a, a phenomenal achievement by everybody associated with it. Uh, raised a tremendous amount of money for local NHS and local hospitals and charities. So, you know, to be part of that again, it's, it's, it, it's, it just feels like you're giving back a little bit to the community. You know, like I said, I had two fantastic years of Blues uh, and I, I, I still have a, a close affinity with the club and I play for the old Blues boys when I can. So uh, I still live in the area. It's, it's, I love it around here. You know, it's great. Tads, we're going to have to get him on Blues TV when the season starts again. You can do a bit yeah, of play. Definitely, I think. Yeah. Expert analysis. Absolutely. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Just go with analysis. <laughs> we can't let you go, Jeff. We've got a couple of minutes before we, we have to leave. Um, 
any appetite to get to get back into the the dugouts at all, or is that you had a go? And no, that that's me. That's me done. I'm uh, I'm more than more than comfortable now with my lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a couple of years over in Ireland, um, which went reasonably well. Uh, managed to stay up on the last day of the season with Galway United. Um, I then went uh, moved to St Pat's in Dublin. Um, we had a, a little European campaign. Stoya Bucharest knocked us out in the uh, of the the um, Europa League in the penultimate game. Um, and then I went out to America for six months and worked at IMG in Florida, coaching there at a, a private academy. So uh, I've, I have experienced the coaching side of it, and the management side of it. Um, I did enjoy it. Probably not as much as I would have liked to in order to stay doing it. And, and that's where I'm at now. Uh, I, I loved my football career. Enjoyed every minute of it. Um, but I'm, I'm comfortable now in retirement. I've taken up golf. So I'm trying to get trying to get half decent at that. So uh, now the horses are open again. I'll have to try and get back out. And uh, I'm just enjoying my retirement. Absolutely. Which I really appreciate you taking the time out to have a chat with us this afternoon. It's been great to leave one or two of those little stories and memories. And hopefully we'll get you back down St. Andrews sometime soon. Yeah, look forward to that. My Cheers, pleasure. Jeff. Tats, thanks again. Cheers, fellas.